Global Navigation Satellite System or GNSS. So whenever we talk about uh, satellite constellation providing the location, we generally talk about GPS. But you will understand now that GPS is one of the GNSS. There are multiple GNSS available. Global Navigation Satellite System. This is our Earth and different distance. The satellite are flown they are in orbit because of various reasons sometimes you want the earth observation satellite sometimes you want location sometimes you want uh, say weather so at 36000 kilometer at a distance of this much it is geostationary geosynchronous then we have the middle earth orbit meo then we have low earth orbit so middle earth orbit is around about uh, 20,000, around 20,000 kilometer. This is not the exact figure. Uh, when we, we discuss more, you will understand that the the height from the Earth is somewhat different for different satellites. And LEO is also varying. So let me just uh, say that 800 kilometer to 1,000 kilometer, but, but it goes up to six from 600 to 1400. So this is LEO, Earth Observation Satellite, geostationary, geosynchronous for communication and for weather. But at MEO, that is Middle Earth, normally we have the satellites, those providing the location. So these are mainly GNSS satellites. So GNSS stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. That is, it has to cover, it will cover whole Earth, whole globe. So this is an umbrella term that takes care and encompasses all the GPSs. So this includes the constellation of satellite orbiting the Earth's surface. Transmitting signal and determining the position that we have GPS. So GPS global positioning system is one of the four GNSS. So we have four global GNSS systems. This is GPS, Navstar GPS, United States. Then we have Russian Federation, GLONASS. And we'll be talking about all these. Then European Union, we have Galileo. And then Bedao. Bedao is the Chinese one. So they are covering whole whole uh, world globe. Then we have the two regional systems as well. That is QZSS Japan and IRNSS or now it is called as NAVIC which is Indian constellation. So whichever satellite system constellation providing the location and timing mostly they have three segments. First segments first segment is the is the space segment which you are sending the satellite this one the second segment is the ground segment you can call it as master station it will have monitor station because sometimes it's it's very important to know the health the alumnac the ephemeris the orbit so in order to control that and continuously fit it maintain the health of the satellite we have ground antennas monitor station etc and then we have the third one which is the user segment so this is what you have this is what you have uh, in your hand so this is user segment this is the in in uh, your watches in your cars this is the user segment this is one of the part of gnss or regional navigation satellite system so let me give you a brief idea how do you get the location so you have to imagine this all in 3d this is one of the satellite for example you are satellite always is always transmitting its, its timing its location that is the alumnac and ephemeris so this is all about you know sending its location and time it has atomic clock, very precise clock. So you can be anywhere in its uh, periphery. So you are getting signal from home. Whenever the time you are getting the signal, second signal, you may be here or here. Think think this in 3D. Ha, which one is the correct one? For that, if you start getting the signal from the third satellite. So this is the point. Okay. So trilateration is the method. From here, you can get you get your latitude, longitude, uh, your all the information which you can get. Basically, it's it's spatial location or your uh, the point location. Now you want to know about the height also. That is not not very high, just low earth, uh, maybe you know few 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 kilometers for that four satellite. So now you can know the elevation also. For example, if uh, if you are at first story or at fiftieth story of any any uh, building, you can know about this by four satellite. So. You have polynomials, computation all going on. GPS or Global Positioning System. So this is a Navstar GPS. Navstar GPS. This is GNSS. It is a Global Navigation Satellite System. Navstar stands for Navigation Satellite Time and Ranging. So this is the this was the first first system which covered whole Earth. And this all started with the Cold War between 
then Russia and America, USA, and Russia happened to send the satellite into the orbit, and then it all started. So this is the list of what all happened uh, in due years. The main thing is the navigation surveys for use US troops. This the goal was there. Real time 3D positioning, operation all time weather, any weather. So let me tell you about the system parameters here. So there are 24 satellites in GPS global positioning system and there are around 6 orbits and the, the orbit is basically the path any satellite is going to take. So these are 6 orbit, 4 satellites, so 6 for the 24 satellite. These are the operational satellite. There are many more, but these are the operational satellite. So this is somewhat these are uh, tilted through X, uh, this uh, Earth axis 45 degree. Around 20,000 uh, kilometer it is. That is the Middle Earth orbit. Somewhere you will see 20,180. Uh, 20, some sometimes you will see 20,200. So just an average I'm taking. It's 20,000 around about. So 12 in 12 hours it will complete one uh, uh, rotation around the Earth. So it will be the or revolution to be very that orbit it covers so two in a day then 10 to 12 years the life expectancy is there and the the main thing is it has atomic clock the atomic clock as i said it is very very precise it it never loses its time so that is how you get the exact position that is how the time and ranging is done so what happens here is whenever there is a satellite it sends the the time and position. So we have a receiver that is the user segment. So say the time T1 is the time sent by the, uh, the satellite. So type T2 it receives. T2 minus T1. So speed equals distance by time. What you will do? Distance can or range can be easily found out by the speed that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Multiply it by the time that is T2 minus T1 and that is going to be giving you the distance. So this is how you the multiple uh, location you get. Multiple satellite gives you different uh, ranges. GLONASS. So you will somewhere see a, it has global navigation uh, satellite system but in uh, Russian it is, it is taken from actual Russian uh, uh, say wording of this. Global Noya navigates the Onaya Sputnikovaya and Sistema. From here it was taken. Uh, GLONASS. This is the acronym taken from here. So this is the GNSS global navigation satellite system of Russian Federation. And this is a space-based satellite navigation system which is operated by Russian Aerospace Defense uh, Forces. It is, it is uh, an alternative you can say to the GPS and uh, it also provides global coverage and a very good precision. So it was the, you know, when Ronald Reagan was there, it was a star war which prompted these all kind of GNSS. So this was developed parallel to GPS. GPS. And I have given you the timeline what, when what happened. So there are 24 satellites here and how these, these 25 satellites are in orbits. There are 8 satellites in each orbit, 3 orbit basically. So 8, 3 is a 24. In uh, GPS if you remember there are 6, um, six into 4. That is how it be becomes 24. So we have here inclination also that is the main axis earth axis so it has some elevation here also this is how the 24 cons uh, these are the uh, operational uh, operational satellites so the height is around about 20000 you can say it is ex to be precise 19100 uh, kilometer and then we have the orbit time is almost 12 uh, 12 hours 11 hours 16 minutes so in one one day it uh, twice it goes around the earth so one place it will come two times and this GLONASS satellite they have the expectancy of three years unlike the GPS which has 10 to 12 years of life, life expectancy. So we have a GLONASS satellite uh, has its own frequency for sending. It is using FDMA that is frequency division multiple access unlike the CDMA in GPS and this never there is no artificial deterioration of results like the selective availability. So two frequency receivers for GLONASS, this is uh, also available. So let me tell you again, two, 24 satellites, CDMA, 8 new uh, these uh, satellites uh, in 3 orbits. Galileo. So this is the uh, satel satellite system or you can say this is also a GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. This is a GNSS currently being created by European Union and it's all started with China. China and European Union started it. But the different part partner you see, China, Israel, Ukraine, Morocco, South Korea and Norway. Norway is not a member of European Union but still it, it is in ESA. So this is European uh, Space Agency and uh, this is named after the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. So what is the different uh, difference here? 
if you compare it with the GPS and the GLONASS? Galileo. The basic difference is that this is no, is under the control of public. So it is made for the public. Other GPS, GLONASS and BEDAO, they are under the defense control. So as I'm saying, GLONASS, BEDAO, GPS, they are somewhere related to the armed forces and they are made for that. But this Galileo is for whole, whole uh, say, Europe. The UK put a lot of money because of the Brexit. The things are, uh, you know, changing. So the operational satellite, there are 30 satellites. In Galileo, there are operational satellites. Please understand that the, the satellites which are sent are different and satellites which are operational are different. So there are 30 satellites and uh, around 23,222 kilometers. This is the orbital altitude of Galileo satellite system and the life uh, lifetime is uh, greater than 12 years of the Galileo satellites and see this is the system as I said it all uh, has a stepwise development it is also public though European, this European Union also has or that place has also has EGNOS we have the uh, the airport or airport authority or the aircraft systems also that is to land them properly EGNOS system. So the operational cost of Galileo and EGNOS it is a uh, you know a quite a hefty amount. So go Galileo, EGNOS surveys, Galileo combined surveys all is there providing this Galilean open surveys, safety of line, commercial surveys, public regulation surveys, support to search and rescue surveys. BEDAO, BDS, BEDAO navigation satellite system. So this is People Republic of China, so this is a Chinese GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. Uh, in certain literature, you will find it to be Regional Navigation Satellite System because, you know, it has three three stated stages. So, this will be global and BEDAO, this this uh, word or, or has come from, see, URSA Major. Previously, how do people navigate? They would see the stars, so URSA Major. So, the Big Dipper, that is the brightest star of this URSA Major. The Chinese name of this star is Bidao. That is how the name has come. It has been projected by Beijing as a rival to American global positioning system GPS. The full constellation is scheduled to have 35 satellites. So there are three Bidao. Bidao 1, Bidao 2, Bidao 3. Bidao 1 also known as the first generation, three satellite constellation. Bidao 2 also known as Compass, second generation of the system became operational in 2011. Then this is the listing given by the China Daily. But we will not go into the details because various satellites being sent, some of them will be decommissioned also. But finally, you have we will have more than 30 satellites, that is 35 satellites around will be operational. So this is the operational number of the satellite. So 30 will be operational. There may be more than that. There will be more than that. And if you see here, it is the satellites are not only sent at one one orbit. So we have geosynchronous satellite also, media Earth orbit also. Even we have geostationary satellite that is geostationary orbit, geosynchronous also, and MEO media Earth orbit that is around twenty thousand. So this is the Bidao system. Bidao is giving you location, providing you if it is combined with the GLONASS and GPS, it will give you accurate accurate uh, this. Number. And the, the road belt, uh, there is a, you know, there are certain countries. So Pakistan has already started using this BEDAO for the location and other purposes. Indian Regional Navigational Satellite System or IRNSS. Please understand this GNSS is for whole globe and IRNSS is a RNSS, Regional Navigation Satellite System and it is for Indian region. So it is now named, uh, normally called as NAVIC, Navigation Indian Constellation. N A V I N C Navik. So Navik in Hindi it means uh, sailor. Those who go on a sea voyage, they are called as sailor or navigator. So I R N S S sailor Navik. So the coverage will be will be or uh, this right now covers fifteen hundred kilometer. And let me tell you the the coverage because it is going to extend up to or planning to be extend up to six thousand kilometer. So you see here equ at equator one degree is around one hundred and 12 kilometers. So just uh, imagine the extent. So let us take the parallel that is the latitude. It's uh, 50, 50 north that is 50 north and 30, 30 degree south. We have equator in between. This is the latitude. How about the longitude? It's 30, 30 east, 30 meridian east that is the longitude and 130 till 130 degree meridian east. 
that is how it it goes beyond beyond the border so subcontinent also it is taking care 1500 to 6000 km so this system consists of seven satellites two more additional satellites are there so seven satellites so let me tell you about these seven satellites this three three are the geo geostationary satellite geostationary you know that they are they are at a orbit of 36000 that is why they always seem static and it it has same time as the earth so it seems static then we have geosynchronous same as 36000 km but it it will be tilted uh, with the earth axis just because to give the whole coverage so that is how it makes seven satellites and it covers up to 1500 km beyond it, its border so irnss provides standard positioning service this is open to all users accuracy is better than 20 meters so we need to talk about uh, gagan also gagan so whenever you know the flights are landing you know that now when you sit in your aircraft you see the path also how do you get the path in uh, united states canada you you see the area you have was europe they have ignos in the same way for india or indian subcontinent because the area is huge for that we have gagan so as i just indicated earlier when you are flying you see the path of your aircraft and that is quite accurate so these all are sbas they are not gnss they are not uh, the rnss they are sbas sbas is satellite based augmentation system and this is sbas g, g gagan stands for gps aided geo augmentation navigation and this is basically getting the data or location information of from gps and then removing the accuracy the exact number or the exact location is what is extracted so gps for example if you know the exact location of certain uh, of certain point then whatever location gps is providing you can just remove that error you get the exact this is how sbas work so gagan is a combined effort of airport authority of india along with the indian space research organization so this 15 indian reference stations are there three indian navigation land uplink stations are there three indian mission control centers are there and it is going to provide or is providing uh, an accuracy of 3 meter and even less than that so 1 to 3 meter because when you are actually you know landing the aircraft you don't need 20 to 50 meter accuracy you need 1 to 2 meter 3 meter accuracy so even the difficult airport like mangalore and leh airport in india where we have different very marginal weather different different uh, difficult approaches landing aircraft becomes very easy helpful right qzss quasi zenith satellite system this is the regional uh, navigation satellite system of japan so this qzss is owned by government of japan and this is the coverage area operated by qzs system service and this qzss seven satellite seven and satellite will be there in 2023 but right now we have four satellite it is proposed to extend to be extended to seven satellites and the basic is sbs so the gps signal the inaccuracies are are cleared and it will make it more accurate so qzss or quasi zenith satellite system is also known as michibiki in uh, japanese this is a four satellite regional transfer time transfer system satellite based, based augmentation system sbas and developed by japanese government asia oceania region it focuses along with japan so this the goal is to provide the precise uh, highly precise stable positioning service for asia oceania compatible with gps and as i said we have four satellites right now but by 2023 it is proposed seven satellites so this is all about the gnss regional navigation satellite system and global global navigation satellite system thank you so much take care of yourself